All right, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and slowly back away from you. ShireSociety.com Am I required to answer your questions? Uh, yes. Oh, Ridley Report. Awesome. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I do have to ask you, if you're going to videotape or you're going to do anything, you have to be back. Describe for our listeners what uh, what they're going to find when they go over to YouTube and click on one of your videos. Oh, they're going to find really low-budget videos. Uh, and there's always something missing from a video that I do uh, <laughs> for YouTube. Because I look at it, like Robert Plant used to say was, uh, was when he was in Zeppelin, he used to say, uh, you know, like they would go to the studio and he would sing something and he'd make a mistake. And they'd say, well... It's rock and roll. Just leave it in. Uh, it's, we don't need to spend the extra $300 an hour to fix it. So just leave it there, and we'll go on and do the next song. And um, and he was right. You know, it's just, just rock and roll. And, when, and, it, and it, video is just video on YouTube is just video on YouTube. It doesn't need to look like CNN. It doesn't need to have high production values. Uh, it's good if it's interesting. That there's no boring parts. Just the rest of it doesn't really matter. <laughs> So, so um, uh, each of my videos sacrifices something, like leaves something out in order to reduce production time. Uh, but I try to make sure I always leave something out that I can leave out without making it boring or bad, you know, right? So, um, for instance, I might go and, and to an event and videotape it. Well, I just don't bother to edit it. I just throw the raw video on the air. And I, and I think that way as I'm shooting it, just try to keep the shots short and don't shoot anything that's boring. Take some interesting shots. Can do some very short interviews. Slap that on the air raw. Left to my own devices, I would prefer the thumbs down. But that could be misinterpreted. I've skipped the editing process. But because I've been very careful about what I shot, there's really not anything boring in there, hopefully. Um, and if I'm not at an event and I'm just editing something, well, I might skip a different aspect. Like, I might not write a script. I might just blabber into the into a microphone and then slap some video on that, throw that on the air. Again, as long as there's not too much that's not interesting, your YouTube video is fine. And that's, that's the way I look at it, just... Skip some of this fancy stuff that's not going to get you any extra attention and focus on what's interesting, slap it on the air, and get something on the air every day. French drove all the way from Lake Sunapee, and evidently the Obama administration gave out more tickets than they actually had space for in the park. Also, something you do in your videos is you talk very casually to the listener. Uh, kind of like, you know, they're a friend, they're there with you, they're, they're, you know, they're seeing what you see and you're explaining to them what's going on. And uh, I, I think it really gives it a, a personal touch that makes the, the, the person viewing the video uh, really puts them into it. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. I hadn't thought about it that way, but the, uh, um, there's a, um, a writer named Kashif, you know, who used, I guess he used to produce for Whitney Houston and some other even bigger stars. Uh, and people used to say that about him, and you read his books. Uh, which are just books about how to make a buck in the music industry. He sounds like he's writing directly to you. Um, and really, a lot of reporters have that talent, and you can find that in them as you work with them. Like, a, a lot of the neatest people that you'll meet are mainstream press reporters, or at least, well, back in the day when I was in the mainstream press. It's changing, you know, it's all changing for the worse for a while anyway. But back in the day, you know, when the press was still the press, um, there were some really interesting and fun people uh, that worked in newsrooms. And um, I used to go out, like there was one reporter I went out with, uh, the space shuttle fell, the space shuttle blew up above my apartment back in, back in 2003, right? You know, I lived in Dallas. Uh, right above my apartment was where it blew up. And it scattered debris all over East Texas. They, the station sent me out to East Texas. I was working as a videographer for them. And I'm chasing space shuttle parts for a week. And um, I was with this reporter. Uh, he was uh, one of the most interesting people you'd ever talk to. He just had a way with words. He was a lot of fun. He didn't take anybody seriously. He didn't believe anything the government said. It's just what you want a reporter to be. And it was so fun to listen to him talk about the, uh, the crazy feds that he had run run into all over East Texas, right? You know, while while this um, while this was going on. Um, 
But as soon as he would get on camera, he would just parrot the federal line. Thou shalt not pick up pieces of thy space shuttle. It is sacred, and thou shalt go to jail. You know, thou shalt not run thy business if thou hast had pieces of our shuttle land near your business. Thou shalt do nothing, thou shalt, shalt shut thy business. And it was, it, was just, it was just so night and day listening to the real him and listening to the him that he felt he had to be while he was on camera, you know. And I thought, wouldn't it be better if I could just capture the real reporter, right, and throw him on the air? Well, I can't do that, but I could capture the real me and put the real me on the air.